Insiders have leaked numerous details about Pacific Rim 3. It has been revealed that the film's events will unfold in the underground world of Kaiju, known as the Antiverse. We will witness how the Pan Pacific Defense Corps brings the fight to the Kaiju and their creators, the precursors on their turf, aiming to put an end to their imminent threat once and for all. This plot was already teased in the conclusion of Uprising, but let's go through it step by step. After the release of the anime series Pacific Rim The Black, fans of the franchise began wondering whether there would be a logical continuation continuation and what to expect from a potential third film. The Black became a noticeable Netflix exclusive, but calling it a complete success is not straightforward. This Japanese-American project produced by Guillermo del Toro and evolving after the events of the two films tells the story of a brother and sister searching for their parents, Jaeger pilots who disappeared in Sydney for several years. The desperate protagonists decide to embark on a search themselves, taking a training Jaeger that has been standing under their settlement all this time. Despite the the series release, it has been a decade since the first movie came out, and fans are still waiting for a full-length Pacific Rim 3. Although Del Toro promised a big surprise for the franchise's 10th anniversary, and the audience started speculating that an announcement for the third installment would be made, it never happened. Del Toro has repeatedly expressed confidence that Pacific Rim will not conclude with the second film, and he has a plethora of ideas for future projects. The director also revealed that after the release of the first film, he provided Warner Brothers with extensive material, envisioning an entire cinematic universe with detailed descriptions of the mythology of the Pacific Rim world and branching plot lines. However, producers opted for a slightly different path, incorporating some characteristics typical of the MonsterVerse into the franchise. Despite Uprising receiving a lukewarm reception from fans of the original, the film managed to financially justify itself, opening up broad prospects for the creation of a third movie. Five years later, discussions continue about the potential threequel with assurances from the creators that it will address the shortcomings of the sequel and bring the franchise back to its initial success. Uprising's director, Stephen DeKnight, in a recent interview openly discussed ambitious plans for the third Pacific Rim and even for a whole cinematic universe. He noted that he couldn't disclose all the details at the moment, but the team has clear concepts for upcoming projects. According to the director, during the filming of the second film, they actively took notes on what they would like to see in the third movie. As a result, numerous script drafts were accumulated. Steven already has a general outline for the next film. He also drew parallels between the Pacific Rim and Star Wars, emphasizing that future projects may not only be direct sequels, but also include spin-offs with several plots, characters, and universe expansion through the introduction of new stories. While Guillermo del Toro's franchise may not reach the cinematic heights of Star Wars or MCU, its presence has been cherished by fans since the inaugural movie stormed onto screens a decade ago. The Knight also explained explicitly stated that the third Pacific Rim would serve as a transitional film for a massive crossover with the MonsterVerse. It's worth noting that both franchises are distributed by Warner Bros. and Legendary, so from a copyright perspective, nothing is preventing them from creating a movie where Jaegers battle Godzilla and Kong. Currently, audiences are eagerly awaiting the release of Godzilla x Kong The New Empire, where the plot promises to delve deeper into the underground realm of monsters known as Hollow Earth. Also in the closing scene, of Pacific Rim 2, Jake portrayed by John Boyega tells Dr. Newton that humanity will venture into the depths of the oceans to confront the kaiju. In a potential third movie, a massive war might unfold not on Earth's surface but in the monster's homeland known as the Antiverse. What if the producers opt for a necessary retcon, intertwining the origin of the Antiverse and Hollow Earth into a cohesive narrative? This could lay the groundwork for a crossover between the Monsterverse and Pacific Rim. Stephen DeKnight has acknowledged that coordinating collaboration among these studios would likely pose a challenge for the project to materialize. The conclusion of Uprising set the stage for a third film where the Pan Pacific Defense Corps would confront the precursors and their kaiju to thwart an imminent threat. This battle involving Jaegers traveling through a rift to face the precursors opens the door for Jaegers to potentially slip into the Monsterverse, where the King of the Monsters awaits. Given the divergent direction that Stephen DeKnight took with the Pacific Rim franchise in the often and criticized Uprising, it might be prudent for him not to oversee such a colossal franchise crossover. While envisioning Guillermo del Toro's world, the one reintroduced in Pacific Rim 2 feels markedly different from the grounded real-world atmosphere of the first film and the Monsterverse. Ideally, audiences anticipate the return of Pacific Rim to the silver screen through a third live-action installment and perhaps even a crossover with Godzilla. However, Pacific Rim 3 should stand as an independent film, any 
any hint of a crossover with the MonsterVerse is expected only in a post credit scene. The creators are already promising to focus on the realism of the narrative, returning to the approach of the first film. This is especially true for the action sequences. Viewers will need to believe once again in the reality of the battles between giant creatures, therefore the dynamics must be appropriately handled. It has always seemed that the first Pacific Rim is underrated. While critics may have had reservations about the plot and the acting, the film holds its own value. In an era dominated by polished blockbusters like Transformers, Pacific Rim offered something unconventional. The attention to detail and the meticulousness with which Del Toro brought his vision to life are impressive. One could argue that in this film, form takes precedence over content. However, this is only a problem if the form captivates the viewer and holds their attention until the end. Even after 10 years, Pacific Rim remains impressive. In Uprising, not only was Del Toro's visionary touch lost, but the entire atmosphere of the original suffered. Unique design and the logic of the world were also compromised. The sequel not only turned out to be devoid of ideas and empty, like a parasite on the original's body, but it also significantly undermined the brand's reputation. This disconnect is noticeable even in the trailers. Thus, Warner Brothers and Legendary bear a significant responsibility to deliver a worthy third movie to the audience, steering clear of stylizing it to match popular trends. Pacific Rim 3 must be unique and recognizable, preserving the original's distinctive charm. If the creators opt for a style similar to the second film, it could be another setback as the sequel's appeal is primarily attributed to the merits of the original. It's crucial to acknowledge the mistake in the choice of style and return to the familiar visual concept, ensuring that the third film captures everyone's attention. One can understand why producers opted for such a style in Uprising, perhaps aiming to create a more dynamic and entertaining film. By that time, the industry had already dictated its rules and audiences preferred brighter films akin to Fast and Furious. However, this approach backfired and Pacific Rim lost its recognizability. Recognizing the error and reverting to what made the franchise unique is essential. There is hope that everything can still be set right. During the discussion with Guillermo del Toro, the future of the franchise was precisely addressed. The importance of the third movie remaining true to its unique style and visual concept characteristic of the original was emphasized. The creators stressed that the success of the Uprising sequel was largely rooted in the audience's interest in the original. The opinion was expressed that it is crucial to acknowledge a potential mistake in the style of the second film and return to what made Pacific Rim distinctive and appealing. The original film rightfully holds the status of a cult blockbuster in the kaiju genre. Given this, the threequel needs to retain this recognizable identity, going back to its roots and avoiding an attempt to adapt to current trends. Hopefully, the filmmakers will understand what makes Pacific Rim special and offer the audience a new, captivating, and engaging experience. Subscribe.